After being put on ice by the talent agency, I purchased a male incubus from the black market. With white hair and golden eyes, a heart-shaped spike on the tail swinging slightly in mid-air, and a pink tattoo on his belly, he was quite a sight. I had him call me master, and took pleasure in bullying him ruthlessly. However, during an audition, he cornered me in the makeup room, revealing himself as a renowned maverick director. His eyes were teasing yet full of an invasive sense of control. I'm sorry, it seems like now you have to call me, master. The black market was teeming with people. An old, rusty cage sat unnoticed in a remote corner. Inside was a male incubus with white hair and gold eyes. His face was covered in grime, rendering his features unclear. But his physique was impressive. I hadn't intended to buy, but as I passed by, his thin, long tail wrapped around my wrist. I looked over to him, finding myself drawn into his pleading eyes. By me. In a moment of folly, I paid. All my savings. Damn, I muttered under my breath, taking the leash from the seller's hand. The other end was connected to a black leather collar around the man's neck. He was tall, yet he obediently bowed his head and stood behind me. I asked the seller for a large black cloak that I draped over him. It concealed his peculiar white hair, golden eyes, and elongated tail. Only then did I dare take him home. After all, transactions on the black market aren't the type of thing you broadcast. Once we got home, I told him to take a shower, cunningly handing him only a short towel. After the sound of falling water ceased, the man came out, his face flushed, with the towel I provided hooked around his waist. His face was clean, and I paused as I saw it. Only one thought crossed my mind, I struck gold. Yes, he was extremely handsome. All right all right, from now on, I declare. Spending money on men leads to a lifetime of adversity, but exceptions can be made for tall, handsome incubi, particularly those with well-toned abs. Also, he seemed, very, strong. I wiped a streak of drool from the corner of my mouth, my gaze landing on the light pink tattoo around his abdomen. According to the seller, the tattoo would darken in response to his lust. Now, it was almost invisible. Feeling my gaze, he sheepishly covered his tattoo, with the heart-shaped tip of his tail wagging nervously in the air. He seemed a bit ill at ease. I beckoned him with a curl of my finger. He obeyed well. What's your name? Aiden. Aiden. I repeated his name and pointed to myself, smilingly asking him, what do I call myself? Aiden looked confused, his beautiful, golden eyes full of uncertainty. So, I reclined leisurely on the couch, smiling, remember, from now on, I'm your master. As I said that, I purposely tossed off my slippers, nudging his leg with my toes. He stiffened at once. Yet I kept my tone firm, kneel and put on my shoe. Aiden hesitated for a second and then complied. His slender fingers held my foot gently as he slipped the shoe onto my foot. After he finished, he tried to get up, but I caught him, putting my foot upon his shoulder. Did I tell you to stand? Aiden frowned, decidedly not pleased. Though the shaking of his tail seemed to suggest otherwise, making him look more like a canine, which was strangely endearing. Feeling quite pleased with how things were going, I reached for a slim, feminine cigarette but did not light it. Surprisingly, Aiden proved to be rather adept as he lit it for me utilizing the lighter on the table. The blazing orange flame illuminated his broad palm. He lit the cigarette for me. I slowly exhaled a cloud of grayish smoke, slightly obscuring his face. I felt a thrill. I was an up-and-coming actress with a prosperous future ahead of me. Yet, since that incident when I unleash my fury on a director who was trying to take advantage of me by shoving his head into a toilet bowl, I've been shut out by my agency. Work has been sparse and reality is harsh. All the resources that I've earned before have been acquired by a new rising star named Whitney. My mentality started getting worse and I have been venting out my frustrations by smashing pots, burning papers, and cooking ramen noodles. Now, anger's focused on this handsome incubus before me. The moment the smoke cleared, I violently threw him to the ground, getting up and sitting on his body, kissing his lips. Maliciously, I handed him the cigarette. Aiden choked subconsciously and pushed me away, coughing with reddened eyes, looking pitiful. Master. He called me. But I laughed very happily. The feeling of bullying him was more pleasant to me than destroying those vases and papers. Can't you smoke? I reached out to hold his chin. He glanced down, a smile I couldn't understand flashing rapidly in his eyes. Before I could react to what that smile meant, 
his words grabbed my attention. I can't, master. Will you teach me? The tone of his answer was clever, but his eyebrows slightly pick up a bit, as if provoking me. Hmph, interesting. I was smiling so much, my eyes creased. I put the cigarette in his mouth, saying, first inhale the smoke into your mouth, then hold it with your tongue against the upper jaw, as if normally breathing, and start exhaling when you feel an unstoppable cough. Aiden acted according to my instructions. His gaze was fixed on me throughout the process. As he was inhaling, his golden eyes squinted slightly, mysteriously with a hint of aggression. I subconsciously avoided his gaze and didn't dare to look him in the eye. But the next moment I reacted, angrily looking back. To see him leaning his head back slightly, revealing his Adam's apple. He exhaled slowly and the white smoke wafted from his mouth dispersing in the air. I couldn't help but skip a beat and then stopped. I watched as Aiden reached over to my fingers holding the cigarette, softly, reverently, kissing my fingertips. Master, have I learned? Swallowing, I ruffled his hair. Yes, very clever. I swiftly extinguished the cigarette, leaning down to kiss his Adam's apple. That's the thing I wanted to do most just now. Aiden didn't struggle. However, he later took the initiative to pull my chin up and kiss me. His thin tail around the ankle of my kneeling leg. Slow down. It hurts. Master. Later. He wore the powdered tattoo all night. Not until the fish belly white appeared on the horizon did the pattern fade away. I lost my voice in the process. From that day on, I started bullying Aiden quite often. Whenever I felt annoyed, I'd bite him. His collarbones and chest were covered in red bite marks. There were times when guilt would hit me, and I'd ask Aiden if he resented me for treating him that way. But he'd just chuckle softly and start comforting himself, no, the master only treats me like this because she likes me, right? He leaned in close to me, his clean golden pupils gazing steadily at me, sparkling with anticipation. Under his intense gaze, I felt a bit shy about saying the words I like you, and just settled for a non-committally mumbling hum. Suddenly, he pulled me into his arms, hugging me tightly. He buried his head in the crook of my neck, and I could feel his hot breath fanning on the back of my ear. I like my master very much, very very much. I couldn't help but chuckle at his words, very much? We've only known each other for two days, and you already very much like me? He hummed dismissively as a response and spoke some words I couldn't really understand, that's not a certainty. What? I didn't quite catch what he said. He didn't answer, instead, he bit my earlobe playfully. I'm ticklish, so I instantly recoiled, taking a bite out of his chest to retaliate. A muffled hum escaped his lips as he looked down at the unmistakable bite mark on his chest, chuckling as he did. He then asked me, are you a puppy? I tugged at the collar around his neck, raising an eyebrow as I said, know your place. Aiden quickly surrendered. Yes, I'm a puppy. A puppy that loves its master very much. After saying that, he leaned down and kissed my cheek. It was a very innocent kiss, quite unlike the ones we've been sharing in bed recently, which made me feel a little shy. I quickly let go of him and ran off to the bathroom, almost as if I was running away. The phone in my hand vibrated at this point. It was a news alert from a browser. The once acclaimed genius mysterious director is back with a new masterpiece. Rave reviews. Almost without opening the link, I knew who the article was about. Blake Vandermeer. A well-known genius director in the industry, the small master of the top-tier wealthy Vandermeer family, who is held in the palm of their hands. At the age of 18, he produced a mind-bending mystery film with minimal resources that swept all major awards. However, no one has ever seen his appearance, as he always wore a hat and mask when filming. His uncle stepped in to receive the awards on his behalf. For the following six years, he didn't produce any more films. As people began to speculate that his initial fame was coincidental, Blake quietly released a futuristic sci-fi film half a month ago. Its special effects and plot are beyond reproach. For a while, the term mysterious genius director firmly held its place on the hot search lists. A group of people dug for clues only to find a blurry silhouette photo. Even the nameplate he held in his hand was unclear. However, it vaguely seemed to be a name starting with W. Everyone was guessing which star could be liked by this mysterious figure. Whitney, the rising star who took my resources in the company, directly hinted in a recent tweet that the name on the lamp card was hers. 
hee hee, there are many names beginning with W, but he only has me in his heart, she tweeted. The tag Whitney backslash Blake exploded instantly, shocking the entire internet. What's going on? Are these two a couple? Quick, post some frontal photos of Blake. I'm really curious. No wonder Whitney has been crazily snatching Willow's resources recently. Turns out it's the Vandermeer family. What do you mean by snatching? Where does that malignant actress Willow's acting skills deserve those good scripts? The topic gradually deviated as I scrolled. A group of people brought me up, a person vilified for always playing wicked supporting characters. Before I got blacklisted by my company, I told them I wanted to transition my roles and personally negotiated some major female lead scripts. However, now, they were all given to Whitney. At first, I protested at the company, but they threatened to charge me a sky-high breach of contract fee to comply. Whitney even unabashedly leaned in close and said smugly, it can't be helped, blame it on you being an orphan, without any backing, and offending the big shots in the company. Thinking about this, I started to feel frustrated again. I wanted to smoke a cigarette. Aiden, I said sternly as I opened the bathroom door, bring me my cigarette. Aiden set aside the messy sheets in his hand, came over, handed me the cigarette and lit it for me. Feeling bad? He suddenly spoke up. His voice, husky and deep from the morning, sounded seductive. Hmph. Receiving my response, he opened his arms. Would you like a hug then? I was taken aback. Looking at his clear golden pupils. Such a clean color. As these thoughts ran through my mind, my body unconsciously fell into his embrace. His hug was warm, just like every night when we would fall into madness together, clutching each other tightly. Just when I was looking at my wallet, which was even cleaner than my face, thinking that I would have to resort to part-time jobs to get by, my agent, Rose, suddenly texted me. She said that there's a lifestyle variety show called Let's Eat Together that was willing to invite me as a frequent guest. The catch was, I had to act the part of a green tea lady, a foil to Whitney's character. I understood instantly. The company wanted to elevate Whitney by stepping on me. If it was before, I definitely would have declined. But now, I have this enchanting demon to maintain. With tears in my eyes, I accepted. Before I left, I gave Aiden a harsh warning. I even threatened to brainwash him. During the time that I'm out working, you must wait for me at home, got it? Do not go out, bad people out there will bully you. Aiden sat cross-legged in front of me, looked up at me obediently, pointed to the bite mark on his neck, like how you bullied me? I coughed embarrassingly, um, even worse than that. Hmm, I'll obediently wait for my master at home then. He smiled, revealing his cute little fangs, and his tail wagged wildly. Just like a puppy. I couldn't resist reaching out and grabbing his tail to tease him. Watching his ears turn red in front of me in an instant while his tattoo becomes strikingly visible too. I blinked innocently, trying to escape. But he caught my ankle. We have a few more hours, why the rush, hmph. Master? Well, can we do this in front of the mirror? I want to see you. Okay. Later on, when I stood up, I almost lost my balance. Let's Eat Together is a live variety show. During the initial promotions, it claimed to be real and unedited. However, the general direction is still scripted, and for special guests like myself, there are even persona requirements. Along with the countless unexpected things that could happen during the live broadcast, it really tests our acting skills. The show consists of four regular guests. Each episode would invite a mystery guest, and our job is to prepare meals to welcome them. As per the director's request, I purposely arrived late for the filming of the first episode, and was dressed in fancy, exquisite clothes and exaggerated high heels. In contrast, Whitney who dressed simply garnered a lot of attention. Sure enough, the atmosphere in the live chat room was instantly fired up. Who is Willow trying to seduce dressed like that? If I didn't know better I'd think she's in some reality dating show, speechless. All of us are waiting for her, talk about self-importance. Poor Whitney's face has turned red from waiting. Seeing this comparison, I suddenly understand why all the resources have gone to Whitney, who'd be foolish enough to work with such a haughty person. She totally deserves the criticism. And many other similar comments. I walked up to the other three guests, took off my sunglasses deliberately, and in a high voice said, I'm sorry. My pet dog at home is very clingy. I was distracted and missed my flight, hence why I'm late. 
You all wouldn't mind, right? An apology without any hint of remorse and causing a delay in filming because of a dog. Frustrating indeed. Hugh, an emerging top-tier guest famous for being straightforward in his opinions, immediately looked unimpressed. He sarcastically said, so this is your attitude towards your work? No wonder, without a script, helping someone like you become famous is truly a misfortune of the entertainment industry. The barrage was full of praise for him as the voice of everyone. Whitney quickly changed the subject, pretended to be innocent and began to play peacemaker, oh, it's normal for a girl to be late for a while. Brother Hugh, you should speak more gently Hugh glanced at her, wanted to say something, then went off to eat some fruit in frustration. The bullet screen was full of laughter. Ha ha ha, did the number one truth teller in the entertainment industry just get shut down? This Whitney is kind of capable. Well, after all, Whitney is the girlfriend of the mysterious genius director Blake. Hugh is considered Blake's cousin, so he must be kinder to his own family. Can the production team invite Blake over as a mystery guest? I want to see the lovebirds show off their affection. Can't agree more. And many more comments like these. In the program, Whitney had already taken my hand with a bright smile, Willow, let me show you to the room. In the script provided by the production team, I was supposed to awkwardly smile and pull my hand out of her embrace at this point, and then deliberately provoke another guest, the aloof film Emperor Ethan. This film king had recently announced his mutual childhood crush, and their couple supers were super popular. Moreover, I was fortunate enough to have worked with Ethan on a TV drama that hadn't been aired yet, and I had seen his sweetheart on the set, a very cute girl. So I absolutely do not want to play the role of the other woman. Not even for the character setup. I silently turned towards Hugh, who seemed eager to smash the watermelon in his hand, and coquettishly asked, Hugh boy, can you help me with my luggage? He frowned tightly, retorting rudely, try making that annoying sound again? The comments section was filled with laughter. I pouted, pretending to be upset as I moved to lift my luggage. Whitney, trying to play her role, hypocritically tried to help me. Decisively, I picked up the smallest bag and left the overweight luggage to her. All right, it's just perfect since I don't know the way. Thanks a lot. Whitney looked startled, but due to the presence of cameras, she could only go to pick up the luggage. Before she had even touched the suitcase, Hugh stepped forward to help her out. Go have some food there, I'll help her. His differential treatment immediately made the live broadcast explode. Yes. I'm so thrilled to see Hugh's reaction. Willow really has no shame. Doesn't she know what courtesy is? After all, Whitney took her resources. She's probably seeking revenge. Such a petty person. The company, in an attempt to promote Whitney through this show, had enlisted the high-traffic Ethan and Hugh. Adding my character as a contrast, they did put a lot of thought into this. After the show officially began recording, I started to talk nonsense to disgust everyone according to the script. Initially, I felt a little embarrassed, but later I discovered that this was absolutely thrilling. Ethan maintained an expressionless face towards everyone, so let's not discuss him. Hugh was obviously annoyed at me and kept snapping at me, but he had no excuse to take a whip and make me work. As for Whitney, she took on my tasks voluntarily just to display her kindness. She'd work the whole day till exhaustion but dared not utter a single word. What I had to do was to disgust everyone in front of the camera and chat with the charming male demon at home when the camera was not on. I would urge him to send a picture of his abs. Sometimes, Aiden would bashfully use bathing as an excuse. I would straight away call him on video. Are you there? Let me see the handsome guy taking a bath. His face would turn red and he'd answer in a shy and indulgent tone, Master, stop messing around. But the phone camera would faithfully show me his abs, and the slender tail that was nervously wrapped around his waist due to shyness. Hee <laughs> hee. It was so cute. Just as I was joyfully training the demon pup, a message from Whitney suddenly popped up. Willow. You're doing this on purpose to provoke me, right? Don't you think I can ruin your career in entertainment with only a sentence? I pretended to be innocent. I am just following the script. Since you have the guts to confront me, why not go to the director? She didn't respond. A minute later, the director stormed in aggressively. Willow, do you not want your salary anymore? Starting from tomorrow, follow the script in your dialogues, you're not allowed to make Whitney do your work anymore. She's the future Miss Vandermeer, who do you think you are to provoke her? Seeing the director's words, I pouted. 
such an opportunist. Nevertheless, I obediently replied, all right then, director. The next day, while calling out Brother Hugh and personally feeding him to disgust everyone, I showed a cold face to Whitney. Whenever she wanted to help, I would grimace, not letting her interrupt my work. I made her teary-eyed. When I wasn't around, she deliberately said to others, did I do something wrong that upset Willow? All the live chat comments were like, baby, you did nothing wrong. Dear, don't be upset. Willow is the one with issues. Hugh kindly comforted her too, saying, don't concern yourself with her. I think she's not normal. It's no wonder her popularity won't rise. And thus, I was left to bear all the criticism. After the first episode, my Twitter blew up with slander from haters. The TV show with Ethan, which hadn't aired yet, was severely impacted too. A crowd of people were clamoring for the female lead to be replaced, claiming they felt disgusted looking at me. I leaned against Aiden's broad chest, ranting to him. I'm so irritated. Whitney keeps bullying me because she's that stupid Blake's girlfriend. I really want to kick her out. Completely out. Aiden froze for a moment, stupid Blake, his girlfriend? I stood hands on hips, explaining the whole situation to him. Upon hearing that the director stated Whitney would be the future Madame Vandermeer, he sneered with a cold look in his golden eyes, she wishes. And with that, he lowered his head to kiss my lips. Don't worry, she will definitely not get into the Vandermeer family. Before I could ask why, I was swept away by Aiden's kiss. After going crazy at home with Aiden for a week, I quickly set off to record the second episode. We were told in advance that the guest this week was going to be a well-known comedian in the industry. Who would have guessed that they would switch at the last minute to Howard the uncle who received Blake's award six years ago? He was actually a businessman, carrying a temperate yet dignified demeanor. Rumor has it that he would be the future authority figure of the Vandermeer family. His guest appearance on this show was definitely a leap for the director. Hugh was also visibly unaware of this. One second he was teasing me about my laziness, the next he was dutifully greeting the person at the front door with respect, hello, uncle. Even though he called him uncle, Howard only appeared to be in his early thirties. He curved his lips slightly, just be at ease during the show. Hugh hurriedly nodded, taking up the role of a mediator and introduced both parties. This is the well-known best actor, Senior Ethan. This is Willow. He reluctantly mentioned my name. Then visibly perked up when introducing Whitney, this is Whitney, cousin Blake's girlfriend. On hearing this, the live chat room nearly broke down. OMG. Whitney really is Blake's girlfriend. Whoa. Who gave Willow the audacity to offend the future Madame Vandermeer? Just waiting for Willow to be boycotted. No wonder Willow's always insisting on calling Hugh brother. Turns out she's jealous of Whitney marrying into the Vandermeer family, and is trying to rope in Hugh to get some of that family glory. Willow's too idiotic. Does the Vandermeer family even care about her getting clout? She's too naive, thinking she can waltz into the aristocracy just like that. On hearing Hugh's words, Howard raised an eyebrow slightly, curling his lips into an inscrutable smile. I was momentarily stunned. Because his action reminded me of how Aiden had raised his brow before I taught him to smoke. It seems like. But Aiden had clearly said he was an orphan. I know. It must be a coincidence. How could a young master of the Vandermeer family end up in the black market as a beguiling demon, getting bullied by me, still be content about it? It's definitely a coincidence. I quickly calmed down and stood by the side with tranquility, watching nervously as Whitney greeted Howard. Hello, Mr. Howard. Howard smiled in a polite yet estranged manner. He did not deny the phrase Blake's girlfriend that Hugh had mentioned. Whitney once again topped the trending list. Blake's fans also started following her on Twitter, calling her sister-in-law. The live chat room temperature also soared. The director was so pleased that he couldn't contain his laughter. Throughout the day's recording, Hugh, who had exposed the truth, started openly calling Whitney sister-in-law. At first, Whitney did not dare to confirm it, often looking at Howard with a hint of fear in her eyes. But every time, it was as if Howard didn't notice her glance, taking the initiative to come over to see what I was doing, and even asked me to teach him to carve carrots. I was truly flattered. During that time, he suddenly asked me, what do you think Blake is like? I was startled, ah? Uh, I don't know him. Howard squinted, his gaze becoming obscure, well, I forgot, sorry. Whitney, who was on the other side, 
saw me being with Howard all the time, and her face grew sullen. Then, pretending to be kind, she came over to take over my work. I had an idea what she was up to and tactfully handed her the knife. Accepting the kitchen knife with a bright smile, she turned to Howard to say something. Who knew that Howard would turn his head and leave with me? Leaving her standing there in a daze. The live chat was filled with question marks. What does Howard mean? Could he be interested in Willow? No way. He's probably just avoiding favoritism. But if it's about favoritism, would it be not better to follow Hugh? Hugh is left by himself still cooking, why doesn't Howard go over? Whoa. What tricks does Willow use? How come she's so good at luring people? Hugh, with his face covered in smoke and exhausted, naturally took notice of what was going on. He blinked in confusion, and his gaze fell innocently on Howard. He straightforwardly asked, Uncle, why do you stick around Willow so much? She's not a good person. Oh? Is that so? Howard casually countered, and then moved to his side, stuffing the half-cucumber he was holding into his mouth. Talk less. Hugh, caught off guard, pulled out the cucumber in indignation, listing my transgressions. Uncle, let me tell you, she's lazy and a big faker. Don't let her face fool you. I thought to myself, what does that mean? Is he complimenting me, and couldn't help but laugh out? It attracted everyone's attention. I quickly waved my hand, sorry for laughing. I couldn't help it after being praised for being pretty. Go on, continue. Hugh, realizing he misspoke, looked aggrieved. Howard curled his lip, patted Hugh's head, and gravely insinuated, you know your cousin Blake holds a grudge, right? Hugh nodded, I know. When we were kids, I playfully pushed him into a field during a spring outing, he covertly tore up my homework for a year, but claimed that our family's dog did it. Howard had a gentle look in his eyes, yet his words were sharp, then you can continue to await your fate this time. Hugh looked confused. His eyes spun, did I fail to take care of my sister-in-law? Howard thought for a moment, hmm, you could say that. Upon hearing this, Hugh immediately put down his work and rushed over to help Whitney. Howard watched the scene from the side with a smile. The audience, as outsiders, finally started to notice something wrong. Am I the only one who thinks Howard is hinting at something? I feel his smile is gloating, he appears somewhat sly. Ladies, I have a bold idea. Could it be possible that Willow is Blake's girlfriend? This could also explain why Howard is closer to Willow, and even says that Hugh failed to take care of his sister-in-law. Look at those Willow fans over there, not even checking the type of person your idol is. Blake's girlfriend, does she deserve him? Exactly. Our Whitney is the real sister-in-law. Hugh certified. But Howard doesn't seem to recognize it, am I the only one who was charmed by Willow's laugh just now? It's so cute and fun, haha. <laughs> After lunch, it was my turn to wash the dishes, and the others were out in the sun chatting. I took the chance to crouch in the blind spot of the camera to ask my little dog what he was doing. Aiden replied quickly. He sent a selfie holding a broom. The kind that showed off his abs. Reply to the owner, cleaning. Looking at him, my heart bloomed. Good, good, very obedient. I'll reward you when I get back. What kind of reward? He also sent a pitiful face poking his finger. In fact, it made me want to go home and kiss him right away. I was about to reply to him when Whitney's voice suddenly sounded behind me. What is this? Waiting for your owner to reward you? Willow, what kind of disgusting stuff are you talking about? She covered her mouth in surprise, her expression shy, but her eyes sparkling with a hint of schadenfreude. Before I could respond, she ran outside shyly to proclaim what she had seen to everyone. I'm so embarrassed. I just saw Willow chatting with a boy and calling herself an owner. What strange hobby is that? Howard was particularly surprised when he heard this and gave me a surprised look. It made feel even more awkward. So I couldn't help but say to Whitney, really, sis? Why don't you register an overseas account and tell the whole world? I'm speechless. What do you mean by sneaking a peek at my chat and shouting it out? She hid behind Hugh and said, in a pitiful tone, I didn't know you are into such different things, this is considered different? I said, looking at the camera and declaring confidently, I don't think this is different. I proudly announce my endorsement for the BDSM community. The director was also stunned. Looking at me as if I were crazy. 
I ignored the astonishment of the people present and smiled at Whitney, innocently asking, however, when I was a child and my mother was still alive, she taught me not to pry into other people's privacy, and even if I saw it unintentionally, I shouldn't talk about it everywhere. You, did you just do that because you didn't have a mother who taught you? She was stunned for a moment before she realized I was scolding her, and her expression faltered. She glared at me fiercely, you. But soon she controlled herself and put on the appearance of a victim, I really didn't mean it, I'm sorry, Willow. Hugh instantly jumped out to play the sister-in-law protector, accusing me with full vigor, Willow, do you have to be so aggressive? My sister-in-law has already apologized, what else do you want? You're really pressing too hard, you petty person. I was speechless and couldn't help but look at Howard, is this the moral concept of your Vandermeer family? Howard politely bowed his head in apology to me, I'm sorry, Miss Willow, it's our fault that he hasn't been brought up well. When we get back, I'll tell my sister to educate him properly. This indirectly implied that he did not agree with Hugh's words. Uncle. Why are you favoring outsiders? What kind of bewitching drug did Willow give you? Hugh. Howard completely cooled his face, with just one floating glance, he made everyone present feel an irresistible pressure. The barrage in the live room also paused for a moment. Wow, I got scared. I feel like an elder at home is about to drag me to the ancestral hall and beat me up. But speaking of which, why is Howard sided with outsiders? Exactly. Willow is obviously being aggressive, bullying our Whitney. You fans of Whitney, don't go too far, okay? Speaking someone else's chat records loudly, why don't you say it's Whitney who's bullying Willow? Or are you all like this? Passerby's comment, I think Willow is fine here, but Whitney is a bit green tea. Members of the BDSM community are here to support Willow. I've never scolded her, so please God bless me with a puppy soon. Because of this incident, during the afternoon recording, Hugh was even more annoyed at me. But I didn't care. I even boldly shared my puppy with the netizens in front of the camera. Sisters, I don't want to eat alone, let me show you something good. With that, I put the picture Aiden sent me, with the face blurred out, in front of the camera, the barrage on the screen was hooting. Oh my god. Those eight-pack abs. Willow, you're my sister. Just thinking about my sister getting such a good puppy, my teeth are about to crush. Hey. You too. Show me close up. I feel uncomfortable being envious, I'll sign out first, sisters. At this time, Howard, who somehow managed to sneak up behind me, asked quietly, may I have a look? What is he, a big man, looking at? I wondered, but still put my phone in front of him. The next second, the gentlemanly man said something unexpected, he seems quite flirty. Can you send me the picture? I was shocked and instinctively protected my phone with my chest and blurted out, brother, calm down. He's not gay. Howard was silent, do I look gay? I laughed awkwardly, ah ha ha, I didn't mean that ha ha ha. Fortunately, he didn't make things difficult for me and left with a smile. I continued to share Pet's daily life with the netizens, inadvertently attracting numerous followers. Whitney couldn't stand it anymore and hurriedly asked Hugh about Blake to gain attention. The director tactfully switched off my camera shot. As a result, there was a lot of dissatisfaction in the live stream. Over the day's filming, Whitney was almost coddled in Hugh's palm. Howard didn't comment all the time. It was not until he was about to leave in the evening that Hugh approached him and said, Uncle, can you talk to my cousin and let me star in his new movie, seeing that I'm taking such good care of his girlfriend? Howard didn't say a word. Hugh thought he wouldn't agree, so he quickly brought over Whitney, sister-in-law, say something. After a whole day of interaction, Whitney was absolutely familiar with the role of sister-in-law. She confidently clutched Howard's sleeve, charmingly acting like a younger relative, uncle, please help him this happened to be the prime time in the evening, and the number of people in the live broadcast room reached a record high. So, everyone saw the gentle Howard, who had been gentle all day long, suddenly turned cold. He pulled his clothes out of Whitney's hand and scoffed, who are you? Did I acknowledge you as Blake's girlfriend? Everyone both inside and outside the live broadcast was stunned. Hugh was even more blown away. What do you mean by that, uncle? Ethan, who had been poker-faced all along and not much of a presence, chuckled, giving everyone a punchline, it means that Blake's girlfriend is someone else, and this Whitney is trying to gain popularity. Hugh was shocked on the spot, utterly guards down. Two seconds later, he finally responded. 
Does it, does it mean that all the sucking up I've been doing all this time was actually for nothing? No, Whitney, who are you? If you're not my cousin's girlfriend, why did you tweet that? I'm done. I thought you were my future sister-in-law, and I turned down other activities to participate in this variety show. Speechless. Hugh, who had risen to fame due to his quick talking, didn't feel wronged at all. He even turned around to pack his luggage directly. Wasting my time, not filming anymore. Uncle, wait for me, I'll go home with you. Director, contact my company for the penalty for breach of contract. This sudden development stupefied everyone. The director urgently shut down the live broadcast. But the recorded video had already gone viral. The keyword Whitney slapped in the face was trending shockingly. Internet users who loved watching gossip were utterly confused. So, Whitney is not Blake's girlfriend? Then why didn't Howard say so in the beginning? Uh, I suspect Howard did it on purpose. After all, the higher one stands, the harder they fall, oh my, the tactics of the wealthy are ruthless. Not outright banning, but rather killing with overhype, wow, imagining from Howard's perspective, I can't think how satisfying it must be, okay okay, now the question is, who is Blake's girlfriend? I, who had experience being shamed on the spot, also began to be curious about this issue. So as soon as I got home, I was eager to discuss and analyze this issue with Aiden. But when I pushed the door open, the room was quiet. Aiden wasn't here. There was a note on the coffee table. It read, I'm handling something, wait for me to come back. Aiden. What's going on? The dog I bought for over six million has run away from home? T I threw the note into the trash can, sat on the sofa and huffed for a while, then quietly took that note out, put it in a frame, and placed it by my bedside. Considering how well he had served me before. Reluctantly. I'll wait for him for a few days I suppose. Unexpectedly, I ended up waiting for over half a month. It was like being in a long-distance relationship as I spoke to Aiden on my phone every day. He seemed particularly busy, his responses came slower. During this period, I realized how little I knew about him. Every time I asked him for information, he'd use his allure to divert my attention. But luckily, I was busy too. Perhaps due to the blunder in the variety show, the company returned the resources originally given to Whitney back to me, and they even replaced my manager with a top-tier one, providing me with a more professional team than before. I was dumbfounded. My previous manager, Rose, secretly pulled me aside in the break room and asked me, why didn't you say earlier that you have connections with the Vandermeer family? I pointed at myself incredulously. Huh? Me? How could I possibly have connections with the Vandermeer family? However, Rose put on a you're still lying to me expression. If you don't know the Vandermeers, why would they send a lawyer to back you up? Confused, I wondered if it was Howard. After all, he was the only one from the Vandermeer family that I had interacted with. With that thought, I found Howard's contact that I had added during the last variety show recording. Mr. Howard, thank you. I'd like to invite you for a meal when you have time. The reply came quickly. It's not me. As for who it is, you'll know in a couple of days. Who else could it be then? Hugh? Impossible. That guy was infatuated with his future sister-in-law in a creepy way. And I didn't know Blake. I was utterly puzzled. A few days later, news about Blake auditioning for the female lead for his new drama spread. Along with others from the company, I also went for the audition. Surprisingly, Whitney also showed up. She had switched to another company recently, and her resources had taken a severe hit. She was no longer as arrogant as before. Deliberately sitting next to me, she gritted her teeth and said quietly, I've fallen to this level. Are you happy now? Isn't this your own doing? Instead of chasing popularity, you should polish your acting skills, I replied. Ignoring her resentful gaze, I got up and followed my assistant into the audition room. After entering the room, I introduced myself while sizing up the five judges in the room, particularly the man in the center wearing a mask and a baseball cap pulled low with Blake. He leaned back slightly, raised his chin, and looked at me through the gap in his cap. His gaze was cold. I stumbled over my words. Because his eyes looked a lot like Aiden's. Was it because I missed him so much? I looked down, avoiding his gaze, and steadied my emotions to perform. I couldn't think of him at this moment. I had to climb up. 
I had to get this role. Men can't get in my way. At the end of the audition scene, the other four judges unanimously turned to Blake in the middle. Director Blake, what do you think? His voice was low and his tone was flat, let's move to the second round. His words made me breathe a deep sigh of relief. Thank you, directors. I said excitedly and went outside to wait for the second round. During the wait, I couldn't resist finding a restroom. The scene for the second round of auditions was the heroine, a goody two-shoes, discovering that her crush is a serial killer. Her emotional transition from shock, to panic, to plunging into madness for love was tested here. I could not afford a single hiccup. By the time I finished performing, my back was drenched in sweat. Despite this, I looked expectantly towards the man seated in the middle. He did not participate in the discussions with the other judges, rather, he was just staring blankly at the resume that I had handed over. That made me even more nervous. My hands that hung in front of me clung tightly to my clothes. Not until the female director sitting next to Blake smiled and looked towards me and said, we hope for a pleasant cooperation, did I finally relax. At this moment, I was very grateful to my past self for studying and acting diligently. After I got the role, I relieved myself and went to the restroom. However, on the way past the makeup room, a man with bare knuckles pulled me in. Ah uh, ah. Uh. My terrified scream took a sharp turn in my throat. Director Blake? He didn't answer, but his eyes were not as cold as they were during the audition. You, what's the matter? As I spoke, I tried carefully to get rid of his hand. To my surprise, he became even more aggressive, forcibly intertwining our fingers. What are you doing? You. Have you missed me? Aiden? Hearing the familiar voice, I felt stupefied. But he just laughed even more happily. In astonishment, I covered my mouth, and then cautiously began to remove his baseball cap and mask. No white hair, no golden eyes, no sharp teeth. I recognized him immediately. It was Aiden. You. How did you become? I was already too astonished to speak. He, however, hooked my chin and kissed me directly, in a rush. I turned my head to dodge, feeling inexplicably wronged. As a dog you disappeared for so long and suddenly reappeared as a genius director, don't you think you need to explain it to me? Blake, however, countered by forcefully holding my chin and forcing my head back, lightly laughing, what do you mean dog? Looking at the situation, it seems that you should be calling me master. His gaze was playful, yet aggressive. I, on the other hand, didn't hold back and slapped his face, took control by holding his chin, and raised an eyebrow, the master doesn't like those words, don't say them again. He touched his reddened cheek with his tongue, not angry, but helpless, at least let me feel what it's like to be a master. I pushed him back onto the single sofa, stepped on his thigh with my foot. The heel of my high-heeled shoe pressed slightly. His Blake winced from pain, but his hand reached for my ankle. His black hair turned into the familiar white, and his black eyes also turned golden. He looked up at me, his eyes wild, pushing so hard, aren't you tired? Damn it. That sentence made me laugh uncontrollably. The grievance dissipated instantly. I withdrew my foot and comfortably sat in his arms. Now tell me the truth. Blake kissed my forehead before saying, I was an adopted child in the family. After turning 18, I mysteriously started to transform into this state, and my body feels uncomfortable, so I don't like to go out. Then how did you end up in the black market? He smirked, I did it on purpose. How else would I get close to you in this form? I was afraid you wouldn't accept me, so I took a different route to get to know you. I was speechless. So, you asked me for more than six million? Give me my money back. Blake ruffled my hair, his smile indulgent, all right, all right, I'll give it back. I'll give you all the money, six billion, you can spend it as you please. How much? Six billion? I'm done with you rich people. I stared wide-eyed. But the next second, I decisively made myself cozy in his arms, knowing when to take a step back. Please note, it's a voluntary gift master, Blake laughed, and his chest vibrates slightly, you sure change fast. Obviously. That's six billion. I would have to start working from the time of the Big Bang to accumulate that much. So, did you know me a long time ago? I don't remember ever seeing you. Your acting professor in college is my aunt. I watched your performance when I sat in for a visit. You were very spirited. So, was it love at first sight? 
you could say it was lust at first sight. He was very honest. Just like me. I also felt lust at first sight with him. If he had worn more at the black market, maybe I wouldn't have bought him. With this thought, my hand expertly slipped into his waistband, grabbing a hot piece, I missed this, let me touch it. He didn't stop me, but instead asked, so, can I kiss you now? Although he's clearly a succubus, he asked with such innocence. Even cuter. I directly pulled his collar and kissed him. Kissing him until everything else seemed to blur. I became the leading actress in Blake's new film. We would pretend to have a normal friendship while filming, and then kiss passionately in places where no one else could see. Sometimes while we were reading the script together, I would deliberately rub my leg against him, watching as his face filled with helplessness. I think we both are quite quirky. Even though we are already together, we particularly enjoyed this subtle thrill. That is until a paparazzo photographed us kissing in the car. His face. Our love. Was exposed. Netizens were shocked. Willow is with Blake? When did this happen? I think they were together before that dinner show. Howard was telling Hugh he didn't look after his cousin's wife properly, but Whitney isn't the one, only Willow left. All right, all right. So, Willow is director Blake's master? OMG, can't believe it. Now that I think about it, I have also seen director Blake's abs. After the exposure, a large number of fans flooded into my Twitter. I took a photo with Blake, who had returned to normal, as a response. He commented below, please order me as you wish, master. This made the fans scream. Howard heard the news and teased him, you really are such a flirt. Hugh silently added me on the messaging app Cousin's Wife. You're my real cousin's wife. I admit my mistake, could you talk to my cousin, give me a role to play please? I laughed until I died. This kid. What are you laughing at? Blake walked out of the bathroom, drying his hair. I showed him the messaging app message Hugh had sent. He also laughed. He sure is flexible. But I won't give him a role that easily, let him dream on. You should take advantage of him to vent your frustrations. All right, all right. Blake really holds a grudge. I was about to reply to Hugh with a smirk, but my phone was snatched away by Blake. He obediently knelt down in front of me, resting his chin on my knee. Master, don't play with your phone. Play. Looking at the pink tattoo on his abdomen, I instantly understood what he left unsaid. All right, all right. 